Hello everyone out there. Uh, this is Amy Martin. I'm with Conscious Companion and I have been challenged to participate in the World Dog Trainers Motivation Transparency Challenge. Uh, the purpose behind this video campaign is to encourage dog trainers all over the world to answer three questions. Those questions are, what happens to the dog when she gets it right? What happens to the dog when she gets it wrong? And are there any less invasive techniques that I could be using? Um, the answers to these questions are going to provide clear and concrete insight into a dog trainer's methods. <laughs> um, so the first question is, what happens to the dog when she does the behavior you've asked of her? What happens when she gets it right? Uh, good things happen. The dog is rewarded. Um, I use food as a primary reinforcer when I'm training any animal, um, especially with dogs, but I also realized that no matter what kind of arsenal of treats and food I have available, some dogs are not food motivated, so I do make sure that there are other rewards um, for the dog. And that could be anything from play, attention, um, chasing a squirrel, running around. Um, it just depends on the dog, but whatever's the most reinforcing for the animal, the dog decides that, but it's up to me as a trainer to know what that is and to use those tools appropriately. So. Um, what happens when she gets it right? She's rewarded. Uh, what happens to the dog, number, second question, what happens to the dog when they don't do the behavior you've asked of them, when they get it wrong? Um, the short answer to that is nothing. I'm not looking for incorrect behavior, I'm focusing on what the dog does correctly. And I don't really see it as the dog doing something wrong. Excuse me, if the dog doesn't, if the dog isn't getting it, I have to look at myself as a trainer and ask, what, how can I set this dog up for success? How can I make the environment more conducive to learning? That's my job as the trainer, is to set the dog up for success. That way she can get it right. Uh, number three, are there any less invasive alternatives to your methods? Um, I think all animal trainers should be asking this question um, regularly, especially dog trainers. Um, I, my answer to that would be no. Um, I use clicker training. Clicker training um, marks the behavior that I like, and then the animal is rewarded after that. Um, the great thing about clicker training is not invasive because it allows the animal to make choices in their environment, and then I mark the choices um, that I like to see more often, and then the animal continues to get rewarded. Um, and the great thing about clicker training is you can use, it's least invasive because you can use it on anything from poison dart frogs to aggressive cats to <laughs> aggressive parrots and even crocodiles. Um, it allows the animal to have control over their environment and make choices. So um, I find it to be the least invasive. Um, and also, it's a lot of fun, and that should be a big part of dog training. We should be having fun with our dogs and our clients. So um, I challenge every dog trainer out there to make a video, answer these three questions, and share it with the world. If you are thinking of hiring a dog trainer, I absolutely recommend that you ask these three questions to anybody that you're going to hire and get clear, concrete answers from them. So happy Force 3 Science-Based Humane Dog Training, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!